high. Now we are about to start a session 6 on software evolution program evolution dynamics. So, under this we are covering uh, different topics by the time we complete this section you will understand and uh, appreciate need and importance of emergency repair process and change implementation. You will understand and appreciate importance of software evolution process and its stages. You will understand and appreciate program evolution dynamics and finally, you will understand and appreciate Lehman's loss. Now, we shall have a look at the summary of earlier session and we shall understand and appreciate software evolution process and its stages through an example. And we have seen in the past that software evolution is a systematic incorporation of changes into operational software to make it to continue its uh, operation by being operational, useful, relevant and of great value to the user as well as the customer. So, that the business of the customer can outperform others. So, under evolution process we are interested in continuously making modification to the software so that it can really add business value. However, the software evolution process will be varying depending on many factors. Some of them are the type of the software being uh, maintained by us, it is going to play a very crucial role. The development processes used in an organization, they also play a very crucial role because uh, that during the development, if the agile methods are being used, then possibly there may not be enough documentation so as to help uh, the maintenance organization. And in case of uh, the processes, if they are very matured, then we may be getting very good uh, documentation and also proper handing over of the product to the maintenance team may be taking place at that time the maintenance may be more effective and highly matured the process. The skills of the people involved also plays very crucial role and past experience of the organization in the similar type of projects is playing very crucial role because when the people are working in the similar type of projects then they are getting a lot of knowledge and uh, expertise and they will be knowing the positive and negative the side of the product as well as the processes. And technology also and its awareness will increase as the people work on similar space for longer duration of time. Using these factors we determine the type of the evolution process that we have to pick up. When we want to take the software evolution process, then configuration identification and making correction and putting back into configuration management tool and rebuilding and performing regression tests and refining it and deploying it into operational environment plays very crucial role. If we want to make it very effective, then we have to make use of a very good uh, change identification and evolution process. Change identification and evolution process considers system change proposals and which are the basis for driving the entire 
system evolution. If no change requires formally or informally are coming, then there is no scope for change. The users may be proposing changes, the customer may be proposing some changes, the product manager who is comparing the product of one organization with uh, competitive products may be providing some benchmarking reports which can be used to improve upon or new technology that may be actually having a greater implication on the product it has to be brought in and we have to upgrade our software to the new the technological platform all such things are actually uh, driving the change and uh, they are coming in the form of uh, change proposals which are the starting point. Once we consider this the process of change identification and system evolution starts and basically it is a very cyclic process where we go on deploying the system after development and we accept the changes and improve upon. Then once again new change requests will be coming, we improve upon and once again go for the next release and re deploy the new release. Like that it is a cyclical process. When we want to carry out this change identification and evolution process which is very cyclical by nature, we start with the first stage where change identification the process will be playing very crucial role. How are you going to identify the changes and how do we capture it? Whether the change which has been captured is a very true change that must be considered and uh, implemented in our software, all such things need to be addressed here. Once we understand that the change has been identified and that identified change shall be passed to the change proposals. All changes that are being notified may not qualify to be the change proposals. The change proposals are actually after considering the change requests, we perform some analysis and we check whether such changes are falling within the scope of the software that we are building upon and also whether the technology that are being used actually are coping with incorporation of the change that is coming. All such things are being considered. Once such criteria and questions are being answered, then shortlist of the changes that have been identified are put in the form of a, a formal documentation and which is referred to as change proposal. And such a change proposals are becoming the basis for our entire software evolution process which is by nature a well matured stage process. After evolving the software we are interested in deploying it. So, earlier system has been phased out and new system has been put into operation. These four the stages which are cyclic in nature will be continuously being used and finally, we are evolving the new software which is of great business value. Now, once we accept the change proposals, we are making use of software evolution process. It is having a four stages. In the first one, we consider change proposals and we perform analysis over those change proposals. Then based on that, if we accept the changes that are coming in the form of proposals after performing technical analysis, after performing the economic analysis and if we find them they are feasible, then we are receiving them as the change request. If analysis is indicating that they are not 
worth to be accepted, then we reject such change proposals. Most of the companies are having change control board to carry out these activities. After that, impact analysis is being carried out where we are analyzing and uh, estimating about how much effort is required, how much schedule is required, what type of resources are required, do you need any tools so that we can automate it, is there any need to build and for build and release do you require any type of automation, all such things are being uh, considered as the part of release planning where the whatever change proposals have been accepted in the form of change requests are forming the basis and we may be making use of appropriate life cycle of either choosing all the change requests in a single shot or we may be considering the part by part these change requests and make them as requirements and then we may be uh, planning for the release of the software. Then in the third stage, we go for change implementation. Here we are identifying what are the configuration items that need to undergo change and from the configuration management tool, those are to be given to the different types of uh, the developers as well as architects and designers and they also have to be given to the testers, all of them will be working on their roles and responsibilities and then the we are actually going for change implementation by modifying the code and then after modification, retesting and regression testing takes place, documentation will be upgraded and traceability metrics being maintained and after completing all such things. Once we find that change has been implemented, it underwent all testing and retesting, then we bring it into the configuration management tool, then we build the new software, then we plan for deploying it and also we hand it over to the maintenance team. So, these are the total phases that we put in the form of the diagram. Now, the next thing that we are considering is what are the type of software evolution that may be taking place. Basically, two types of uh, things we may have to undertake. Number one is emergency repair process. We are building the software and we deploy it the software becomes operational and uh, users will be operating on it and a lot of end users also are getting the benefit out of the software product that we have deployed. Like uh, we might have built a retail banking system, after building it we deployed it. Now retail banking system they will be working and people are using it to make their transactions. So, once such the system become the deployed and become operational, the operation may not be smooth. There are lot of challenges that are coming from the field. The people who are using the software may be seeing the uh, performance related issues where they may be feeling that the performance of the system is not up to mark or they may be facing uh, some security related uh, threats or the system is the malfunctioning or system may actually collapse and it become totally inoperational as well. Like that different types of problems we may be facing when we deploy the software and when we make it operational. So, under the such circumstances change become evident 
to the software to make it operational and we have to make it to continue its operation with as much less impact as possible on the user as well as the data. If we have to carry out such things, then we have to bring in some change management. The first one is emergency repair process. So, in this one, the requests or the problems may be coming and they are actually triggering our entire repair process. The issues such as system faults or environment that disrupt normal operation or unanticipated changes to the business may be getting notified here. So, system faults means because of some problem within the system, system may be uh, getting paralyzed where some of the functions may be performing good and some of the functions may not be behaving as expected or the system may be producing the results which are not as per our expectation. Such things are coming in the form of system faults. Second type of thing evolution the environmental related disruptions. Possibly there can be mismatch in the service packs, the system uh, may be hanging, there can be uh, some issues of uh, the software is not operating on new type of uh, the internet browsers. We might have built it for let us assume that internet explorer 8, but we want to use web application on higher versions of internet explorer or some google chrome. At that time system may not be working as expected or we want to connect our software with some other external uh, the database and when we are trying to pick the data from the database at that time the data is not coming as expected and uh, there, there is no uh, good session connectivity with the databases such things may be coming in the form of environmental related issues or third type of uh, changes are totally unanticipated. The organization which has deployed some software across its different functions suddenly merges makes the decision about uh, merging with some other company. At that time lot of business rules uh, are to be changed in the software which is operational and which is being used to automate the entire the organization. At that time how are you going to carry out the changes across to make the software which is being used for automation is still becomes relevant and continues its operation. Or we might now notice it that the entire the mobile applications are moving from earlier operating system to android. At that time how are we going to move all our software to android platforms such things also we may be seeing from the business angle. Such things when are they coming in the form of change requests are triggering the software evolution process and the we have to take them in a systematic manner. If any of these things are immediately the hampering the product and make it inoperational, then we have to take different steps. For example, the updation of new android platform to make our mobiles to continue its operation that also may happen or we may be the asking the customer to make use of new version of service packs as well as software packs and then they deploy the entire software so that it can continue its operation. Any such things we may have to take quick fix is the focus to make the system operational as quickly as possible and then by focusing like this we are totally want to make our software product 
to work quickly. When we want to do it, if we are going to make use of too much cumbersome processes of reporting errors, capturing the errors, performing lot of analysis, whether to accept the change or not, if we go on doing a lot of documentation, then the possibly the customer and end user may not be perceiving value. Because of such things, we do not want to follow any formal processes here. We want to uh, go for corrective measures to quickly fix and make the system operational. When we want to carry out emergency repair processes, we try to avoid formal processes. No formal processes are being followed. When we ignore processes, then we should be ready for certain the side effects of it. Some side effects will be inconsistencies in the documents and work products can be censored. What is in design document and what is in the final code, they may be mismatching. What is in architecture and what is in design, what is in code and finally, final product that is being deployed. There can be lot of uh, differences and we can notice them that appropriate uh, traceability might not be seen. All such inconsistencies are coming to our notice. By using such characteristics, we want to carry out a repair process, which is basically having four stages. First, the issues are being captured in the form of change requests, which are coming most of the time as informal reports through phone or some other means. Once such change requests are coming to us, then we analyze the source code. If such a change request has to be considered and fixed, what are the different types of source code that are getting effect, affected by such a change request? We try to identify that. And most of the companies are having a dependency metrics, wherein we are maintaining a one matrix, which is indicating the uh, unit 1, unit 2, unit 3 like that. Then after that, unit 1, unit 2 like that. Then what is the dependency between unit 1 and unit 2, unit 1, the 1, unit 3, all such things are evaluated. Then we are going to, if there is a dependency, we are having some tick mark in that uh, dependency matrix. By referring uh, such a dependency matrix, we are going to, going to identify what are the different source codes and units that are being affected if we want to incorporate changes and we pick up uh, such source code for change. Once we pick up such source codes, then we are going to go for source code modification and configuration items we identify, the configuration items undergo some changes. Then after that, uh, after making the changes, retesting and regression testing is being carried out. Then we put back into configuration management tool, then we build the software and it undergoes uh, the integration test and finally, user acceptance test and then finally, we are releasing the entire software. So, like this, these four stages we carry out in a most informal way. So, the whenever change requests are coming, immediately we call for the meeting, then we ask what are the source codes that need to undergo change. We discuss with the team, we are recording it, then we ask the team members who are ready to take what type of uh, development activities and then we distribute to them and within a given time and uh, effort which verbally are commit, uh, the committed by the team members, we allocate. Then after that particular time, we ask them whether the team has completed, then we bring them back, integrate it and deploy. Totally informal and having a lot of discussions without any formal uh, documentation, we carry out change, then we deploy it. Now we shall consider the case uh, study, how it works. So, one retail online banking system was deployed in multi branches and was operational and suddenly crashes. Then customer calls on phone and informs on the same. Then how do you address this to make the system to work? Now, first the whatever 
the customer is actually reporting the system has crashed that has been considered as the change request. Then we talk to the customer at what stage he had seen that system has crashed. What are the usage patterns? Then we get some uh, initial feedback. Then with that initial feedback, we call for the meeting of the software maintenance team and we actually put across the change request system in multi branch which was operational is crashed now. The customer has reported the problem. Then the team will be analyzing it and they are identifying the potential sources of the problems. What are the different types of uh, issues? Is there any uh, disconnectivity between front end with the server? Whether the software which is being uh, used was supposed to be used in earlier version of Internet Explorer, whether the customer without knowledge has installed new Internet Explorer and trying to make use of the software, are there any platform related issues, are there any service pack mismatch without the knowledge customer ha might have removed the service packs. We discuss all such things. And after the discussion, they will identify the source code that has to undergo change. Then the source code which has been maintained in the configuration item in the form of libraries are being identified and to the, the people who are put into maintenance job for them we are going to give access rights. Then the people are picking up that configuration items and who has to do what work that has been allocated based on the knowledge and experience and expertise all such things we consider and then people are making the correction. Then after correcting it we perform unit testing and then once we think that the code has been implemented properly we bring into configuration management tool then we build it and perform retesting and regression testing. Then once it is working properly, then we pass it to the customer and replace it and make it operational. So all such activities usually will be between 30 minutes to one and a half hours. Within that, we carry out all these activities. The team, knowledge about the product and how they are quickly identifying and the creativity and capability of the team plays very crucial role here. So product knowledge becomes very crucial. Then we are going to work on the next type of thing, the change implementation. Here we are not going for quick fixes. Instead of that, we consider the changes as a systematic process and we want to use a rigorous processes and try to implement it. Here whatever proposed changes are coming, they are not coming uh, as a system faults or something. The customer is listing out what are the things to be implemented in the new version of the software which has been released after some time. So usually such changes are actually going from release 1 to release 2. Set of uh, the requirements are coming in the form of proposed changes. And then we pick them up, we perform impact analysis. Then uh, we are going for the rigorous requirement analysis and after requirement analysis we perform estimation using the former processes. Then we establish the team, then we make it as the team for the next release of the software and they are going to work on the system and then the once all the requirements have been actually addressed, the team is proceeding with and they are going to address it. So the software development process is actually is being carried out and then new version of the software which is actually fulfilling all the proposed changes is released into the market. Now think about 
this particular case study and try to solve. Online business to consumer internet web application has undergone successful user acceptance testing and is being deployed. Customer calls up and say that system is not working saying that there is a system configuration error. How are you going and addressing this particular issue? Use the all the stages and try to address it. Now, with this we are entering into program evolution dynamics. So, program evolution dynamics is a study of the system change. When we incorporate changes into the system and what are the impacts of a such a change that we have incorporated and what are the consequences of it on the end users, on the system itself, on the customer and are you getting the business value out of it? All such things we want to check up here. It helps to understand characteristics of software evolution. In what way the changes have been incorporated? After incorporating changes from existing level to which other level the software is going to move. Emerge out of empirical studies of system change and significance of feedback in evolution. So, lot of uh, organizations are being considered for the case study and data has been collected. After collecting the data, if you have to improve <coughs> entire software, how the feedback mechanism has been implemented in the software development organizations, how do they capture and what is the feedback mechanism being implemented, all such things are being considered. Then documented as Lehman's laws concerning system change. Now, the program evolution dynamics are being greatly affected by Lehman's laws. Lehman's laws are concerned with system change and the significant feedback in evolution process. Lehman and Bellady claim that these laws are likely to be true for all types of large organizational software systems. They are not considering that the smaller systems they are talking about application of the laws for very large organization and large software systems. They call them as E type of systems. So, these Lehman laws are applicable for the requirements that are changing to reflect changing business needs and how such requirements are affecting the entire software evolution. Second one is new releases of the system are essential for system to provide business value. How these new system releases are taking place so that they can really make the business sense. Now, they have listed out uh, many laws. The first law is on continuing change. Here, the system maintenance is an inevitable process to accommodate continuing change. A program that is used in a real world environment must necessarily change or else progressively it becomes lesser and lesser useful in that particular environment and users may not be liking to use the system. Ultimately, what the users want? They want uh, advanced technologies, they are uh, aiming at using uh, good features, they want to have good functionalities, they want to have good non-functional uh, features to be implemented 
when such things are being uh, considered then only they will be happy because of that if we want to make the system to be of great business value we have to incorporate many functional and non functional requirements and we have to make the system operational if we have to do that continuously we have to accept the changes and then in a phase manner we shall try to implement those changes to make it uh, operational by going for newer and newer releases of the software so continuing change is very crucial to make the system operational and of business value second law is about increasing complexity complexity increases as the system is changed its structure is degraded when we build the first the version of the software at that time we are having very good documentation of all the phases since we are considering larger organization larger systems then obviously there will be more matured processes we are having very good documents in the form of requirement specification architecture document design document then code has been properly being maintained and then user acceptance testing test cases also are being maintained like that very good documentation and along with very good project management uh, related practices will be in place after releasing such a first version of the product then as and when the change requests are coming which may be demanding for the urgent repair or which may be demanding for systematic change actually result in lot of changes especially the urgent repairs in the urgent repairs our focus will be being as much informal as process ignoring the documentation trying to incorporate changes and make the changes into the software product integrate it and release like that when we go on carrying out such changes as days are progressing the system becomes uh, more and more complex whereas documentation will be in the earlier stages so there will be totally mismatch it increases the complexity and also the structure of the software also might have undergone lot of changes as an evolving program changes its structure tends to be become more and more complex the only way to avoid this happening is to invest in preventive maintenance wherein software structure is continuously improved without adding to its functionalities means if you want to have stable behavior then we should stop adding up new and new functionalities whatever you implemented we should go on stabilizing it by performing more rounds of testing and also the fixing up the defects and we should avoid incorporating new functionalities extra costs and extra resources must be devoted to preserving and simplifying the structure so such things we have to carry out so increasing complexity in larger organizations and uh, larger software is quite evident the third law of lehman is talking about large program evolution so dynamics of the system is established at an early stage in the develop development process these structural factors influence and control system changes and also influence organizational factors that affect the evolution process this determines the gross trends of the system maintenance process and it also limits the number of possible system changes here what happens is when we build the version 1 of the software product we might have used the processes and the system is being built and we make a, a lot of negotiations about whether to go for strong coupling in design or weak coupling whether the cohesiveness should be there or non cohesiveness shall be allowed like that we make lot of decisions at the architecture level and design level 
if we go from multi layer architecture then scalability and flexibility and incorporating new and new changes after incorporating the changes uh, incorporating uh, the new system is possible but if the basic architecture is not multi level if it is a very rigid uh, two or three tier architecture and without uh, giving uh, is go for loose coupling but we go for very strong coupling then the system does not allow changes to be incorporated if the system has to undergo very smooth change then it should be architecture driven and uh, the design comes after that architecture is always focus on scalability flexibility then uh, incorporating more and more changes post release whereas design is always focus on quick implementation and it does not allow the structure to be non cohesive it wants to make cohesiveness and it wants to make the software that is getting developed as rigid as possible so if during the earlier development of the process we instead of going for multi layered and uh, scalability and maintainability and portability related is issues are not being considered if we go for design implementation centric architecture and then if we are going to make use of uh, the very strong coupling and cohesive development with no flexibility at all and possibly down the line we face a very tough time in going for implementing the software changes the fourth law is talking about organizational stability if you want to implement changes and make the software operational with lesser problems the organizational stability becomes very crucial the organization where automation has been implemented and our software is working properly shall not undergo frequent restructuring because when we implement any software software is having two types of uh, Uh, users one is system administrators second one is normal end users so in the system administrations we are giving lot of privileges and accesses if the system is undergoing uh, the organization is undergoing lot of changes then the people who are going to work as a system administrators their roles and responsibilities will be frequently changing and the system has to be reconfigured for the changing organization structure at that time it becomes very tough to ensure that system works properly or if the organization goes for some mergers with another company at that time old system has to be integrated with uh, the software of the new organization at that time we may be facing a lot of problem about integration related issues like that when the organization is undergoing lot of uh, restructuring and if the organization is uh, frequently changing then we face lot of problems in uh, the what you call maintaining the software so large systems are developed and maintained by large organizations using maintenance and change processes if the organization undergoes restructuring acquisition and mergers or new process changes are incorporated then emerging chaos and confusion about new processes and roles and responsibilities will affect the system maintenance so always most of the companies when they go for acquisition and mergers they always struggle and when acquisition and mergers of bigger organizations are taking place how to go for automation and which processes are to be considered as the basis and how are you going to integrate the systems of both organizations all such things are being considered very good impact analysis has been implemented and uh, plans for integrated new system will be put in place which may be running for one and half to two years then the next law is talking about con conservation of familiarity means when we go for version releases there should be lesser uh, changes in look and feel and uh, uh, presentation of earlier version with a new version for example let us say we are we have used earlier version of windows now we are installing new version of the windows at that time if the new version of windows is having abrupt changes in the look and feel 
and in its presentation, color combination, all such things, then the users may not be liking it. It is always good to maintain the uh, what you call uh, the conservation of the familiarity. So, the configuration are to be maintained, look and feel are to be maintained. Abrupt changes shall not be put in place. So, over the lifetime of the system, the incremental change in each release is appropriately maintained, approximately it should be constant. So, large systems are developed and maintained by large organizations where the maintenance team is working on system maintenance which has knowledge and skills to maintain the large and complex systems. And this knowledge and expertise is accumulated over many years and if the people who are having such a knowledge continue to work on the system and if the all the documents and their terminologies that are being used continue to be maintaining the similarity, then it is good practice and it is easy to implement changes. So, frequent changes in the processes, people always cause a major issue and we have to ensure that frequent changes shall be avoided as much as possible and version to version there should be compatibility about uh, look and feel as well as presentation. Then sixth law is talking about uh, conti the continuing growth. So, the if the functionality offered by the system has to undergo continuous changes so that users shall be always happy to use the system. If the whatever system we are using, if it is a grand world system which is not making sense in the new environment and people may not be liking it. So, the system shall undergo frequent changes by adding, removing and updating features, functionalities and non-functional changes so that it continues its uh, operational and useful and relevant and of business value shall accommodate and users requirements and it has to work continuously. Next law is talking about declining quality. The quality of the system will decline unless they are modified to the reflect changes in their operational environment. As the system grows, complexity increases and system becomes less and less stable. As the team size grows, knowledge transfer on system and processes may get the hampered and cohesiveness coupling complexity may be affecting the entire software, new faults and errors may get into the system. So, once we build the system from the very point of the deployment system starts degrading. Next one is talking about feedback system. So, the evolution processes incorporate multi agent multi loop feedback systems and we will be having different methods of capturing the changes from the end users, from the customers, from the testing team, from the deployment team like that we will be having multi layered feedback system. One is informal feedback system to capture views of architects, designers, the coders, testers and configuration managers and product managers and user acceptance team. So, this is inform the internal feedback system. Second one is external feedback system to capture the feedback on the software product from existing users, existing clients and potential clients, technical trends and compliance with standards and government rules and regulations which may be frequently changing all must be captured and implemented. So, like this when we capture the overall requirements then we can evolve the system. So, when we want to evolve software we have to evolve it by considering all Lehman's loss, then only it will be totally effective. So, with this we come to the end of the session on software evolution program evolu evolution dynamics. Thank you.